Okay, this is part six. Uh, real quickly, I, I figured out that I actually made two mistakes. So just so there's no confusion, we're just going to go over the end of this one real quickly. I got to here uh, in part A, and if anybody of you, if any of you are wondering why I plugged in two over root thirteen, I shouldn't have. Okay, uh, I I should have plugged in uh, root thirteen over two, and then d theta dt is pi over six. And therefore, dx dt is actually, um, that's actually cancels and leaves another 2 right there. Uh, so that winds up being 13 pi over 12 is dx dt. Uh, that's one of the reasons why my answer in part b was a little bit off, is because I substituted in the wrong dx dt. So if I go back over here, and as I'll show you, we get to here on the left hand side my x was 3 right that was part of the conditional information my z was root 13 and my dx dt is 13 pi over 12 okay this cancels with the 3 inside the 12 leaving 4 and you're left with 13 pi over 4 root 13 or if you want to simplify that that's root 13 pi over 4 okay now when you get over here uh, to this one okay and you're gonna have 2 and again I want to make sure that I plug in root 13 over 2 instead of 2 over root 13 and tangent is going to be 3 over 2 and d theta dt is going to be pi over 6 those twos cancel out the 3 inside here cancels out with that one and lo and behold I am left with 13 pi over 4 for dz dt in both of those methods whether I did it by Pythagorean or whether I did it again by trig okay um, actually it winds up being okay if you go ahead and start here with the cosine instead of switching it over to secant because it just winds up being negative sine theta d theta dt is equal to negative 2 z to the negative 2 times dz dt well the negatives obviously cancel each other out you're gonna get sine theta times d theta dt times one half times z squared when I take these and put them on the other side uh, is equal to dz dt now sine of that old uh, of that old triangle right let me see if I can sine of that old triangle is going to be 3 over root 13 times pi over 6 which is d theta dt times one half times z squared which is 13 okay at which point the 3 and the 6 cancel leaving a 2 down here and I'm left with 13 pi over 4 root 13 and as I've already stated that simplifies into uh, root 13 pi over 4 so there were three ways to do part B in that problem uh, sorry that I yeah I just I wound up plugging in a wrong value for secant theta twice uh, and that's why it kind of got screwed up um, I hope that that's not uh, confusing now that I've gone back and cleared it up hope that answers everyone's questions now this one is another classic a man starts walking north at four feet per second from a point P five minutes later a woman starts walking south at 5 feet per second from a point 500 feet due east of P. Okay, so if this is P, we got to go 500 feet due east. Okay, and just we'll call it something, we'll call it point Q. Okay, now the problem is, is that both of them start walking at a different point in time. But that's easy enough to figure out, okay? Five minutes at four feet per second is going to be what? 300 seconds, 
right? Because five minutes is 300 seconds. Be sure of the units. Five minutes is 300 seconds. That's going to be 1,200 feet. So he is actually gone 1,200 feet. And this is, of course, not to scale. That's 1,200 feet. That's 500 feet, like I said, not to scale, before she starts even going south, okay? Now, this guy is continuing to walk north. She is going to start walking south, okay? Now, here's the thing. You want to know at what rate, okay, at what rate are the people moving apart 15 minutes after the woman starts walking? So what we've done is we've adjusted it so that everything depends on when the woman starts walking because we've taken the five minute head start and actually translated it into an actual distance, 1200 feet, okay? Now, let's go ahead and do that. That is what you're looking for, right? And that looks like two right triangles. But you really don't have to do it that way. You can actually do it this way and make it one right triangle. So even if you want to talk about this being x and this being y, this is still y and this is 500 as well. So you've turned it from being two right triangles, the one over here and the one over here, to being one large right triangle that has, uh, that has, Pythagorean, that has a Pythagorean sort of relationship inside of it, because that's a right angle right there. Okay, So you know that it's going to be 1200 plus x plus y is equal to, and we'll call the distance between them, z. Okay? And you're looking for dz dt, right? So you're actually given a bit of information. Let's not forsake our method. So the given, okay, is the fact that dx dt is 4 feet per second. dy dt is going to be 5 feet per second. And you're looking for what? You're looking for dz dt and the condition is where time is equal to 15 minutes, okay? Well, obviously 15 minutes implies a certain x and y measurement. So let's figure out x and y. So y is going to, they're both going to be easy. How much farther has x gone in 15 minutes? Well, if you went 1,200 feet in 5 minutes, in 15 more minutes, he's gone 3,600. So x is equal to 3,600. Now, 5 times 15 is going to be 75, right? But 15 minutes, uh, 15 minutes times 60 is going to be... Uh, da, 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 hold on. My brain is kind of fried right now. 15 minutes times 60, that's 900 seconds. 900 seconds times 5 feet per second, she has gone 4,500, which makes sense because those are in a ratio of 4 to 5, right? This is 4 times 900, this is 5 times 900, which kind of makes sense. So these were the implied pieces of information that I needed from here. Or did I? Okay, here's the thing. I know that when I differentiate this with respect to time, I'm going to get 0 plus dx dt plus dy dt is equal to dz dt. And therefore, I know that dx dt is 4 feet per second. dy dt is 5 feet per second. So dz dt should be 9 feet per second. Does that make, I hope that makes sense, okay? So basically, the, the distance at which they are pulling apart should be constant, right? Uh, because this leg of the triangle is remaining constant, and the only thing that's changing is this leg of the triangle right here, okay? Um, 
Let's go ahead and do one more. And this one is actually out of your book. This one's actually out of your book. It is number 37. Okay, and it's a little bit. Let's. I'll go ahead and hold that up to the. I'm gonna hold that up to the camera so you can read it. Oh gosh, that gets blurry when it gets that close. I'll read it to you. Two sides of a triangle have lengths 12 and 15 meters. The angle between them is increasing at two degrees per minute. Okay, that ought to. We need to change that to radians, right? How fast is the length of the third side increasing when the angle between the sides, uh, between the fixed lengths, is 60 degrees? Now, that is basically this. Two sides are fixed. Okay, sorry it's jerking just a little bit, it's just the way it was made. Uh, so it's opening up rather quickly but the two sides are fixed. The only thing that's changing is the angle, and the angle is changing at a consistent rate. Now, what is the method by which we figure this out? It's not a right triangle, but it is a triangle, and we know how to use our trig even without right triangle trig, and this one actually winds up being law of cosines, okay? Because it's two sides, and the included angle. Okay. So I know that what I'm given, like I said, this is number 37 in your book, okay, our given, okay, is the fact that we'll call the sides x and y. x is equal to 12 meters, y is equal to 15 meters, and I know that d theta dt is 2 degrees per, what was it, minutes, okay. But if it's two degrees per minute, and I know that a degree, it basically is pi over 180 in order to turn it into radians per minute, I know that that winds up being pi over 90 radians per minute, okay? Now what it's asking, the question, is it's asking for dz dt, okay? And it's asking at the condition that theta is equal to 60 degrees. But of course, I know that theta needs to be couched in terms of radians. So theta is not 60 degrees. Theta is going to be pi over 3. Okay? It's just good to get everything in terms of radians. Now, I remember that my law of cosines is what? Okay? It's going to be a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. Or for our particular purposes right here, it's going to be z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared minus 2xy cosine of theta, because that's basically how it kind of converts. Okay, now when I differentiate this, we've got to remember that this is going to be product rule over here, okay? So, but here's the thing, x and y are not variables. They're constants, okay? So this is 144, this is 225, and this is, well, 12 times 15 is 100, uh, 180, uh, right? And so that's times two, so that's 360 cosine of theta, okay? Now, um, uh, just checking my math in my head. Yes, 360. Fantastic. Okay. I <laughs> just don't trust myself sometimes. Now I have to differentiate implicitly, and I'm going to get 2z dz dt is equal to negative 360, but that becomes negative sine, so it becomes positive sine theta d theta dt. Now, I need to go back and I need to find a piece of implied conditional information because I don't know z, okay? But I do know I can find z. And I can find z by using this. z squared is equal to 1, or this actually, 144 plus 225 minus 360 
and cosine of pi over 3. Now, what is cosine of pi over 3? Cosine of pi over 3 happens to be 1 half. So that's 144 plus 225 minus 180. And I need to take the square root of that. And I'm left with z is approximately 179.499. Okay. Now I'm going to keep that and I'm going to store that into my calculator. Okay. So when I start to look for dz dt, I know that that becomes 180 because it cancels out with that too. I know that I have 180 sine theta, and of course that theta is going to be pi over 3, but over z d theta dt. Okay. 180 times sine pi over 3 over 179.499 times, and then d theta dt is pi over 90. Well, sine of pi over 3 is going to be what? Well, first of all, let's, let's go ahead and get rid of that. So you have 2 pi, and then sine of pi over 3 is going to be root 3 over 2, over 179.499. That 2 cancels out with that 2. And so really what you have is you have root 3 times pi over that z value, and it winds up being 0 0.030 in terms of the number of units, uh, number of meters uh, per um, minute, okay? Now, if that's the case, you could obviously meters per minute, and you could change that. I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot, but you gotta remember that's, that's actually meters. That's, uh, and it was opening rather slowly. It was pi over 90 radians per minute, which is opening very, very slowly. Uh, but that is basically how you apply the law of cosines uh, in a related rate problem with a triangle that isn't a right triangle. Okay. Um, I hope I hope all this is clear, guys. I hope that's been enough uh, examples. It's been six videos, so it, it should be at least getting close to sort of crystallizing in your head. Uh, I am more than willing to do extra ones on this. Uh, it is a really nasty section. Uh, you just have to go ahead and shoot me an email with any questions, with any requests. Hey, Mr. Ford, can you do one with this type of problem or that type of problem? And I will be more than happy to do so. So I hope that that's helpful, guys, and uh, I'll look forward to hearing from you.